So we're on to our static rigid bodies question. Um, and with these questions, the most important thing is to always do an accurate and appropriate diagram to start with. Um, once we've read the question, we should realise that this drum is completely smooth. Remember that if a drum is smooth, or if any surface is smooth, it means that the reaction force that you can get from it is always perpendicular to its surface. So that's going to be a perpendicular force there, which actually comes out from the centre. Okay, so it comes from the centre there, perpendicular force, that's at right angles. We can use um, our circle theorems to tell us that that's going to be a right angle, and this is my reaction force at C. Um, my ground, uh, A, is, um, is not smooth, there's friction there. So I'm going to have a vertical component, which is my reaction force at A, and I'm going to have a frictional force, which is my friction here, which my friction is going to keep that is going to keep that rod from sliding off to the left. Um, the only other force that I need to include then is my weight. It's modelled as a uniform rod, so it's 8 metres long, so 4 metres along that rod I'm going to have its weight, which is going to be 20 g. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, now that, I, um, now that I've drawn my diagram, I want to be able to do something with those angles. Um, I'm told the tan theta is 7 over 24, so I'm going to use Pythagoras. There's my angle theta. My opposite is 7. My adjacent is 24. Using Pythagoras, I should be able to find out 24 squared plus 7 squared is going to give me 625. Square root of that is going to be 25. So that enables me to find sine theta and cos theta. Now, the way I'm going to do these questions is totally standard. You start by um, you start by taking moments around this pivot point A, and then once you've done that, um, you're going to resolve your forces in a um, horizontal and a vertical direction. And it's always the same for the static rigid bodies questions. It leads us in with a nice one marker, explain why the reaction from the drum on the ramp at point C acts in a direction which is perpendicular to the ramp, and the answer is um, drum is smooth. So the force is perpendicular. Okay, second question looks like it's quite nice and easy. It's a nine marker though. Find the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the ramp at A. So the resultant force acting on the ramp at A is going to be two things. It's going to be the reaction force and the friction. I need to find the magnitude of that. So my last thing to do when it says magnitude is going to be use Pythagoras to find the overall size of that force. So let's start ourselves off with um, moment at A. And we're going to start with our clockwise moment, the only clockwise component of that. I can ignore R, A and F because they're no distance away from the pivot point. Um, I'm going to look at my 20G. So moment is going to be the weight, 20G, times by the distance. And remember this is the shortest distance, it's the perpendicular distance from the pivot point. So I'm just going to draw out this triangle here. We know that that length here is 4 meters because it's half of my it's half of my rod I've got a length of I've got a force of 20 G what I want to know is what's this length here well I know that this is my theta and I know that cos theta is X over force so this is going to be 4 cos theta X equals 4 cos theta and which is 4 times Cos theta is 24 over 25. 4 times 24 over 25, which is going to give me 96 over 25. So the moments at A, take me back to the line above, the moments at A are going to be 20g, which is the force, times the distance, which is times by 96 over 25. And because we're in equilibrium, we know that that's got to equal the, mo the um, anti-clockwise moment. The anticlockwise moment is RC times 5. So once I simplify this, I should be able to get RC equals 20 times 96 over 25, which is going to be 4 times 96, which is, I'm going to need to use my calculator here, So I'm going to do 20 times 96 divided by 25 divided by 5, which is 15.36.
So RC equals 15.36G. Okay, we're now going to um, do the second part of the static rigid bodies question. After we've done the moments, um, we're going to need to resolve the forces in a um, horizontal and in a vertical direction. So here, I know that vertically, this is my theta. So this is going to be RC cos theta. And this is going to be RC sine theta up here. So let's start by resolving vertically. It doesn't matter which order we go in, but if we resolve vertically, I can say my RA plus RC cos theta, RA plus RC cos theta, those are my upward forces, are equal to my downward forces, which is equal to 20G. So I can say that RA equals 20G minus RC, which is 15.36G, minus 15.36 g times by cos theta. Cos theta is 24 over 25. So I'm just going to do on my calculator 15.36 times 24 over 25. And 20 minus that gives me 5.2544 g. So that's my reaction force at A. My frictional force at A, so I'm going to resolve to the right. And I can say the only force acting to the right, which is F, is equal to the only force acting to the left, which is RC sine theta, which is 15.36G times 7 over 25. 15.36 times 7 over 25 gives me 4.3008G. Remember, I'm trying to find the reaction force, the magnitude of the force. So the magnitude of the the magnitude of the um, of the force at A. is going to be the square root of 5.2544 squared plus 4.3008 squared g. Um, and that gives me 4.3008 squared plus 5.2544 squared square root times 9.8 gives me an answer of 66.5 newtons. The last part of the question here is just asking what happens if this centre of mass moves to the left. Well, the closer it is to the left, the more the force ends up being at A than at C, so the reaction force at A is going to become larger.